guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks so much for stopping by. My name is Tamara Renee. So as you can see by the title of today's video, it is like an updated type of makeup routine, technique, new products and all of that good stuff. Um, I really, really love how my makeup turned out. Like I always amaze myself every single time, like no cap, like for real, my makeup looks so, so, so good. Now for me to achieve this look, it usually takes me about an hour okay on a day i'm rushing an hour and 10 minutes on a day when i'm taking my time somewhere between an hour and 20 to an hour and 30 minutes sometimes it takes longer if i'm doing a lot of extra stuff on the lids or if something isn't cooperating and i gotta fix up um, i definitely put in the time to make the time for me um, i love doing my makeup it's so therapeutic it's like a part of my self-care it makes me feel good and i just love it overall um, i will say that this video is extremely detailed i try to to be as detailed as possible so if i did miss anything or if you didn't understand something be sure to drop that in the comment section below and i'll try my best to answer um i'm not a makeup artist but trust me i love to play in some makeup and have me some fun as you can see let me get close mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the details honey i really really love how my face turned out like girl 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 i'm sure this video is already lengthy itself so i don't want the intro to be too lengthy all makeup products mentioned and shown and used in today's video will be down in the description box below so check that out i'll try to link what i can i did make sure to show the brushes and list the names and everything and i'll have that in the description box below i'll try to link the brushes if i can if i can't baby i'm sorry I'm really sorry. <laughs> but yes, so if you were interested in seeing how I got all dolled up, then baby, keep on watching. <laughs> Y'all, so today we are going to get started on this face of mine. Um, this is a freshly washed face. And um, yeah, did my skincare routine and all of that. But my face is feeling a bit dry. My lips are dry. I've been doing a lot to prepare for today's video this morning. I'm not too sure if you guys can hear that I sound a bit stuffy on the mic. Um, my allergies have been kicking me in the behind all week. And um, due to like how I'm sounding, like yesterday I sounded worse. Um, I was contemplating on if I wanted to do this video today due to how I sound. But honestly, I just had to make it work today because I need to get this video out to you guys as soon as possible because I owe y'all this video. And um, with how like my schedule is set up, today is like the only day that I can um, do this video. And like I said, I wanna get it out as soon as possible. Like today is what, Friday? Like I'm getting this video out to you, to you guys tomorrow. So after I film, straight to editing. <laughs> um, so I went ahead and applied some, what is this? Laneige lip mask, sorry, lip sleeping mask. Yeah, there we go. That's what I used. We're going to prep the face. I'm gonna go in with my Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base primer it's an all-in-one primer and moisturizer this is a really really good product now even though i go in with this i still apply primer on my face like i, I just gotta make it work okay so i'm gonna go in with a little bit of that i like to take the extra steps when applying this my phone just went off had to check who that was um so I like to apply this amount and then work it into my skin. This step is crucial when it comes to my makeup routine. Like after I started applying this product or like using this product, I can't let it go. Cannot let it go. So now it's time for me to get started on these brows of mine. Um, I usually go in with like a razor or like this, these smaller scissors to cut some of the hairs off. Um, and I use some tweezers to like pluck underneath, but I already took care of that two days ago. So my brows are okay. So this is just a clean um, spoolie. There's no product on it. 
I just like to brush the hairs and just make sure that they're in place and I don't see any hairs out of place. After I do that, now I'm gonna go in with this Sigma Brow Gel. Got this Sigma one in PR and I've not put it down ever since I started using it. And honestly, I think I like it more than the Anastasia Beverly Hills. So we got a mix of some new products and some oldie products that you guys know about that I talk about all the time. For brows, you guys know this. And this part, I do have to stay quiet because I have to concentrate, but I will be going in with the Benefit Cosmetics. This is the Precisely My Brow Pencil and I use the shade number five. Like I said, I cannot speak. I just got to do it. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I just create a line underneath on the top, fill in. I use the end of this brush to feather out the product. And then to clean up, I will be going in with my Too Faced Chai Concealer. Love this product so much. I love Too Faced concealers like with my whole life. Um, so that's what I'll be using to clean up the brows. And I like this color because it's closer to my complexion. So I use it underneath and I clean the top. It's not too bright because I don't like that halo effect look on my brows. Like I just don't. And then for the pencils, child, the brushes that I'll be using um, to clean up and carve out, I'll be using this Morphe M421 brush. It is a round flat headed brush. And I think this brush is perfect to use when you are carving out your brows. And I like to use this for the top part as well. And to blend out everything, honestly, I've had this brush for so long, like now the, the name on it is slowly fading. I honestly do not remember, but it's just a fluffy type of brush, but there's a lot of products on it. And yeah, I just use that to buff away the concealer. Okay guys, so I'm finished with my eyebrows. You see, I really had to concentrate on the brows. Clearly and obviously, I'm not done just yet, but this is the first step I do when it comes to my makeup. And I do have to do my eyebrows first before I do the rest of my face because the way my eyebrows and like my skin be set up, like I just can't do my base first and then do my eyebrows after. I have to do my eyebrows first, then do the rest of my face. So now I'm gonna go in with my Milk Hydro Grip Primer. Are you, as you guys can see, like she is, you know, finishing. Um, she's on her last leg. Let me see if I can get anything out. Okay, good. I just need two pumps. Okay, maybe three. And I'm just going to distribute this all over my face. I like to also pat press it into the skin. And I like to do my things in a certain order because it just makes sense to me. So I prefer to put on that Bobbi Brown base first and let that seep into the skin, let it do what it's supposed to do. And it has time to do that because it probably takes me about 10 minutes to do my brows on a good day. And then um, once I'm done with my brows, then I go in with my primer and get that into the skin. And I let that sit for maybe about five minutes, maybe less. Well, honestly, sometimes it's less than that because I'd be in a rush when I'm doing my makeup. But I just let that settle into the skin. But today, since I don't have anywhere to go and I'm just filming this for you guys, I'm going to let this primer set into the skin before I go in with my foundation. All right, y'all, I allowed that primer to set into the skin for a good three minutes. Um, Face feels good, it dried into the skin, so I'm good. Now we're gonna move on to foundation. And this foundation, this is not new to you guys. Um, I've sp I've talked about this um, foundation in the past. I've been using it for a good while now. And honestly, I think it is such a huge game changer in my makeup routine and my overall makeup look. And I just love the way it makes my skin look and feel. And it is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. Oh my goodness, I love this foundation so much. This is in the shade Macau. And I'm just gonna shake this up. 
And with this, you know, video, you guys, I'm trying to be extremely detailed as possible. Um, I just can't slap on my makeup and just not give you guys like proper information as to why I do things and stuff like that. I just feel because that's how I learn. Like I need to know specific details. I'm a detail type of person. One pump on each side and then just a tiny bit on the forehead. And honestly, that is all I need. A little goes a long way. And for the brush, I will be using my Anastasia Beverly Hills A30 foundation brush. Like I said, a little goes a long way. And I'm just going to distribute this product all over my face. And I like this method. I feel what gives me that smooth, flawless base is honestly due to how I apply the foundation on my skin. I do it in a padding pressing motion, really press it and lock it into the primer so that the primer can hold on to it. But do you see, like I said, a little goes a long way. I used to go in with a lot, you know, I used to pump, 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 but honestly, I don't need to be doing all of that. And then I just put a little over my eyes, on my eyelids, because I've got some serious dark circles. Ciao. <laughs> and now the little bit that we have on the forehead will take care of obviously the forehead and the perimeter of my face. And I'm just going to take my time when it comes to applying this product because I don't wanna mess up my hair or anything. And very soon you will see what I'm gonna do. I will go in between my brows to remove this unibrow situation that we got going on. And it's gonna look proper, okay? Another thing I do wanna mention, for me, I noticed that, and I think I still have this problem where my face is the darkest part of my body. And I'm really trying to work on that when it comes to choosing a foundation. I am choosing a foundation color that matches my chest and shoulder area, okay? Um, it doesn't make any sense for me to get a foundation that matches my face, that does not match the rest of my body because I'm gonna be walking around like a bobblehead type of person. Like my head is gonna look out of place. Like literally my head is gonna look out of place because people will see that it does not match me. And I remember explaining that specifically and someone made a comment talking about like, oh, she uses a light foundation and X, Y, and Z. And I'm just like, girl, I explained why I use a foundation that matches my body and not my face. And turns out, she's a makeup artist herself. And I'm just like, girl, you should you should understand and know why I, I do what I do. But um, it's just that's, what I'm saying is not just for her. Um, I'm just letting other people know as well, whoever um, struggles with hyperpigmentation or like your face may be the darkest part of your body, it makes sense for you to get a foundation that matches your neck, chest, and shoulder area. I recently went to a Laura Mercier um, lunch and we were celebrating their 25th anniversary and we had like a masterclass and everything. It was such a good event. And the makeup artist that was there, well, the global beauty global director was there. And she also explained that too. She was like, you wanna make sure that you're for your base, you wanna get a color that matches your chest neck area for the people that have the problem where your face is the darkest part of your body. If you have that problem, you are to get a foundation, a color, a base that matches your neck area, chest area, and you will be good to go, okay? So look at that. Like I said, a little goes a long way. And you guys saw, I went in between and separated the brows. <laughs> to move on, I'm going to go back in with the Too Faced Chai Concealer. And you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do this to help cancel out the dark circles, my dark circles, the dark spots on my lids. So I'm just gonna go in with a tad bit and I'm officially done with this concealer. And I'm going to, oh, dear God, that almost fell. Yikes. I'm gonna go in with this Japanese brush. This is 726. As you can see, girl, it's dirty. I apologize, but it's a flat, dense type of brush. And I'm going to use this to buff out this concealer on my eyelids. And then I'm gonna go in with my Laura Mercier Honey Translucent Powder, or Loose Powder. And I'll be using this Real Techniques 4 or 402 brush. 
love this brush so much and i will be using that to apply the powder onto the eyelids to set the product because it is a creamy liquid product you have to have to have to go in with some powder to set your makeup so if you have creasing girl follow these steps and we won't have any creasing going on okay for me i like to piece piece everything <laughs> and i like to work in small areas i just need everything to be proper and flawless for me had it into the product here and i'm just going to set this concealer and i'm pushing this product in pressing and pushing this product in So now that the eyelids are set and ready to go, it's time for me to go in with my favorite color eyeshadow to use on the lids. And that is a nice chocolate type of brown. Sometimes I like to go in with a heavy, intense brown. Sometimes I like to go with a light brown, depending on my mood and depending on, you know, what I'm trying to go for. So today um, I'll be using this eyeshadow palette. This is from Sigma. This is their ambience eyeshadow palette. Let me just open it and show y'all real quick. Do you guys see the colors? Beautiful, right? So, so, so beautiful. And let me just show you guys the back real quick so you guys can see the color swatches here and everything. So beautiful. To apply my eyeshadows, this brush is like hands down one of my favorite brushes. It's my favorite eyeshadow brush. And this is the Morphe M441 brush. It's just a simple fluffy brush um, when I do like my chocolate browns I like to go in with one eyeshadow on the lids sometimes I don't even go in with eyeshadow sometimes I'll use, use my bronzer depending on like if I'm in a rush or anything like that I just find that it's so much easier to just use one eyeshadow especially to do a certain look and sometimes depending on how like heavy-handed you are you can go very light with that one color on your lid and then get really heavy in the crease area with just that one shade I'm going to tap my brush into this shade right here this is called Oasis and you wanna do that so you don't have too much product on the lid. And I'm just going to take my time and as you can see the motion I'm doing this in, it is a patting type of motion because I don't want to lose the color, I'm trying to pack the color onto my lids. I know it's looking a bit lighter on camera but trust me, because of the lights and all, but trust me, it's a pretty brown. So what I'm going to do is now feather out, diffuse the color on my lids because I don't want any harsh lines. I want this to, like, look at that, faded, okay? That is what we want. We want it to be faded. On the lids, it shows much more like a lighter brown. And then in the crease area going into the brows, it's looking like a dark brown. So it's look. it looks like I have on two eyeshadows, but baby, it's only one. That's it for the lids. Easy, simple, like straight to it. Now it's time to conceal and contour and all that. Yes, I said contour, like your girl is contouring now. <laughs> I don't know why, I just felt like I wanted more of a chiseled look when it came to my makeup. Um, bronzing will still get the job done for me and for you if you're a person that does not want to contour, cause trust me, I, I used to be that girl, okay? This is the Fenty Beauty match stick this is in the shade espresso i usually use the, the uh, sorry whoa child i usually use the shade truffle but honestly i cannot find that color right now so i'm just gonna go in with espresso so i like to place my contour color higher on my cheeks because if i place it lower like right where it should be i find that it makes my face look a little bit bigger and heavier I can't explain it. It's all about placement when it comes to your makeup. So the higher I bring this up, it's giving me more of a snatched, you know, type of look. And that is honestly what I want. So I'm just going to apply this on my forehead as well. That is honestly it. I do not apply this on my nose because I have not mastered that yet. And truly, I don't have the time. Um, for concealers... I like my Too Faced. I tell you guys this all the time. If you guys watched my recent vlog, you would have heard the good news. Like, I finally stocked up on butterscotch. Like, it took me, well, not me. It took Too Faced long enough 
to, you know, get the products out to the girls. So butterscotch now, I no longer have to, you know, skinch and take time <laughs> with the butterscotch that I already have because I bought me a few bottles, okay? So this is Too Faced Butterscotch and I like to use two concealers. Um, one, you know, like I could definitely use this color alone, but it's not bright enough for me, but I just need butterscotch in my life. Like, trust me, I know what I'm doing. And I'm just going to bring it up on my nose, kind of, you guys can see and get in that corner area and just space or spread it out just like that. Now, honestly, I know it seems like a lot, but I prefer to apply my concealers like this. I can't do the little bit here and some here and then leave the middle. Like, I just can't. I cannot do or keep up with these trends. I've tried it. It did work, but honestly, I feel like it doesn't give me the kind of coverage I fully, fully want. So, baby, it's a no for me. This is how I apply my concealers and I like it. It may seem like a lot, but hey, I like to use a beauty blender to blend this out so it does take up some of the product so it's not too, too, too much. I like to let it sit for a good three to five minutes. When you allow your concealer to dry down, it gives you more coverage when you are blending out. So I'm gonna wait for this to dry down and then I'm gonna blend it out. And then on top, I'm gonna go in with my Latte. This is the shade Latte. I love this color so much it's so beautiful i love a nice bright subtle yellowy type of under eye i can't do anything too bright and white and you want to make sure that you're selecting the right shade of concealer for your under eye because baby if we're going to do that we need to make sure we're selecting the right shade so that when it blends out and we put on our, our our powders to blend it and everything it looks good like you're to see the pop but it's not to look like it's you know, we don't want to be looking like no ghosts out here. I find for us chocolate girls, um, any concealer that has like a yellow undertone to it, like a, oh my gosh, I just think it's the best, okay? And my sponges are nice and clean. So I'm going to go right in and blend out my contour color first. And then I like to do my highlight after. And I'm just being careful with where I am blending out and positioning this product. This is looking a tad bit, you know, it's looking dark, but it's okay because um, when I apply my powder and stuff, I can, you know, diffuse it and make it look good. But that's why I, I started using Truffle because I found that this was giving me a really, really dark look. And the undertone of this um, contour color is, I believe, cool. And my undertone, my skin undertone is not cool. So that's why it kind of looks a bit gray, kind of, but... I'm just letting you guys know that sometimes I struggle or, you know, I go through problems like that because I picked the wrong color. So as we can see, like the face is starting to look snatched. I'm looking in the viewfinder and I can see the difference already. And now to blend out the forehead. And this is bringing back color into the skin. When it comes to makeup, I love learning new things and trying out new things. Always up for improving my makeup skills. I'm trying to give makeup artists, but I ain't a makeup artist type of look. So now I'm going in with another sponge and I'm going to blend out the lighter shade of concealer. And I like to start with my chin first and then work my way to my upper lip, bridge of my nose, and then my under eyes. All right, so you guys just saw me apply Latte and I'm just gonna let this sit for a tad bit dry down before I blend it out. And you guys know like I crease like crazy and I crease quick so I can't do much talking. While this is drying down, let me just quickly get into the powders I'm gonna get into. So I now use the One Size Translucent Powder. You guys, this product right here is the absolute 
best, okay? The absolute best. I used to stay far away from the shade translucent. I always had to use some type of medium banana yellow type of powder under my eyes or just like to set my concealers because I just thought that this would give me a really white cast. But I was wrong. Um, I was introduced to this product because of a makeup artist that I follow on Instagram. And you know, she caters to us chocolate girls and she talks about how good this product is. So I'm just like, what? I had to give in because of her. So I'm gonna let that sit right here. So I apply a thin layer of the one size and I still mix that with my Laura Mercier Honey Translucent Powder. I love this powder so much. You guys know how much I love me some Laura, okay? Like she gets it. After I go in with a thin layer of the one size, I go in with just a thin layer of this on top to help tame the, the brightness under my eyes. And one thing I forgot to mention is the one size powder, I only place it under my eyes. I don't place it on my chin or nose or anything like that because I don't want a white cast. I want a rich yellow type of color. So I go in with the one size under my eyes because I do want to control my creasing areas. And then I go in with this on top and then I place honey right on my nose, you know, my laugh lines, my chin, upper lip, just to, you know, set where I place the concealers. And I also got to set my laugh lines because laugh lines, <sighs> Those are just the absolute worst when it comes to makeup. Like I've had my days where I've done my makeup. I look so good and everything. Listen, let me go out and laugh and giggle two times. And then face is just looking like, Ooh, I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate when that happens to me. Now I'm gonna go in with Honey and I'm going in with this same Real Techniques brush I showed you guys earlier. And I'm just going to apply a thin layer over my brows because they are super duper shiny. Let me get close. You see how shiny that one is? And I'm going to mattify it with the powder. This is something I have to do. I cannot miss or skip this step at all, okay? And it really does help and make a huge, huge difference. That's what I like to do. Oh my gosh, you guys looking, <laughs> I be looking so, so, so crazy. I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more powder under my eyes and to apply that, I'll be going in with this triangle puff. Um, it has this soft ribbon at the back. I got this from Amazon. Honestly, you guys, this is a game changer, a game changer. Shout outs to all the makeup artists out there that be putting me and all of us on. Okay, so I'm pressing it in to the product just like that. I am gonna dust or blow, I should say. And I'm just gonna get right up under my eyes. I bought a pack of these. Um, I think it came with like eight or six or eight or something like that from Amazon. I think I paid what, $10 for it. It is worth it, okay? So if you don't have this little triangle puff in your kit, girl, you need to go get it. Like, get it ASAP. I'm gonna go in and set my contour. So I'll be using the Juvia Placed Bronze Tan Duo. Love it, love it, love it. You guys can see I hit pen. And the brush I'll be using is my Japanesque 961 brush. So I'm just going to pat. I'm going to press this product in because I do not want it to move and apply this on my forehead as well. And if you guys notice, I did not apply any concealer or anything like that on my forehead. Honestly, listen, I did that the other day when I, before, like I was going out and I applied that foundation or sorry, I applied the concealer on my forehead and it was the biggest mistake ever. Um, like, yeah, never again. There's a reason why I don't do it. So I need to continue and just stick to that and not try to do anything on a day when I gotta go out and see people and mingle and stuff because yeah, child, hmm, 
huge mistake okay so now i'm gonna go in with some more powder under the eyes yes more powder um this is the mac studio fix powder foundation in the shade nc50 and using the same real techniques brush you guys i love this brush so much so what i'm doing now to dust away the product under my eye i am pressing it into this product right here and i'm just going to dust and push and press that light powder away and this is going to tame that under eye brightness that we got going on okay so i'm pushing in lightly dusting away towards the nose because i don't want to move the product so you got to really be careful about that and i'm just pressing that product in i used to use the charlotte tilbury powder but um honestly that would create a more white cast and i'm trying to stay away from the white cast so that powder is a no for me right now until i find you know a reason to pop it out again but until then this mac powder is really really getting the job done for me with the same brush again i'm just going to lightly dust away that product next to set the rest of my face and to bring everything together because we got to remove that harsh line and all of that you see going on i'll be using this fenty beauty pro filter soft matte powder foundation in the shade 445 you guys this powder right here is not talked about enough okay it's not talked about enough like what listen ciao Hmm, that's all I'm gonna say. If you don't have this, you need to get it in your life immediately. The brush I'll be using to press this powder in is the another Japanese brush. This is 718. And as you can see, I hit pen. <laughs> and I'm just going to press it into the product like that. I'm going to tap, low away that. And I am pressing, pushing, do you see? Hmm, <laughs> pushing it into the skin. This is an area that foundation was applied and no powder was put there. So we definitely have to set it. And I am lightly going to go on top of the bronzer contoured area to help blend the lines that we see going on. We got to blend it, blend it, blend it. And I'm going with a very light thin layer and I'm going to go on top of my chin, upper lip, Laugh line area. Press again, dust that away on my nose. Bring that up. And you cannot forget the forehead. Now, I don't need to do too much with the forehead because we already set it with the bronzer, but I still like to go in with just a tad bit. And right where the highlight and contour meets, I am going in with that same brush and product and just blend that out to remove that harsh line. This powder just makes everything come together. I love this powder so much. This is a powder I've been using all summer and trust me, it is a game changer. It is a true game changer. Do you guys see how the face is coming together? Looks so, so, so good. Now I'm gonna go in with this Juvia's Place. This is another bronzer duo. This is in the shade Dark. And I'm gonna go in with this color at the top and I'll be using this brush right here. Honestly, y'all, I got this in a kit years ago. There's no name. It was a mimic of Real Techniques. They were trying and I bought this a long time ago. So I'm just going to pat this brush into that color and I'm going to do my nose contour bronzing. So I like to, you know, bring that product into my eyeshadow and then take my time and drag it down onto my nose. And I'm gonna go back in with my powder brush. No dipping of product or anything. I'm just going to diffuse those harsh lines. And that's that. Now I'm going to add some blush onto my cheeks, add some color, you know, some pinkiness type of thing going on. Um, the brush I'll be using is another Japanese brush. Um, this is 717. And this is the volume one palette and i'm going in with this orangey type of color but honestly it looks it's giving coral on camera it's look it looks like it's orange but trust me it's not um i thought at one point it was orange but it's not but when i apply it onto my cheeks so i'm just gonna tap that in there 
and lightly pat. You want to do a little smile. Get those cheeks up. And there we go. Okay. So I am going to go back in with some of that Studio Fix powder. And I'm going to go back in with that same brush. And I'm lightly going to press in, dust away. And I'm going to press that product on top right where the blush and highlight meets because I do want to diffuse that harsh line. And honestly, this is a step that you can skip because when you apply your setting spray, it will help to diffuse it. But I like to go the extra mile to make sure that I don't face, you know, any problems. So to bring this eye look together, I honestly love to apply some of that eyeshadow onto my lower lash line. I think it just, like you can definitely leave it just like this, but for me, I have to add that brown on my lower lash line. It just does something for me and the overall look. So I'll be using that same brown Oasis that we used earlier. And the brush I'll be using is a Morphe M507 brush right here. All right, y'all, so that is it for all the powder products. Like, you guys see how this face has come together. It looks so good, and I just love the color combination and all of that that's going on. Like, honestly, I just love me a matte look. There is one more powder product I want to apply, but I like to do that after I set my face with my setting spray. So I'll be going in with my Laura Mercier translucent pure setting spray 16 hours that's to help get rid of the powdery look before we do that y'all know i talk about this product all the time this is my fan she's dirty but this is like my makeup fan like y'all can can you guys see that i think it's just powder product and everything like it's a lot i'm gonna close my eyes i have to keep my eyes closed for this part and i like to keep my arm far away like this and i like to do a test spray okay I want it to be like a mist. I don't want it to be spitting at me because I don't want to ruin my makeup. Back in with this eyeshadow palette, I'll be going in with the color Days. So this white matte shade, as you can see. So I like to have like a brightness to my eyes when it comes to my looks. Like, I don't know how to explain it. I would usually go in with a shimmer color in the tear duct area, but I like to go in with a pale type of matte color in the tear duct area. I just think to me, it looks so much better. So to apply that, I'll be using this Morphe M431 brush. This is what it looks like. Going back in with my eyeshadow brush. No new product or anything. I'm just going in the tear duct area and lightly diffuse that color so that we don't see that, you know, distinct separation between the two. Like, mm -mm, we don't want that. I'll be going in with this e.l.f. liquid eyeliner. This is my girl. I've been using her since the beginning of time. I'm going to go in with some liner on my lower lash line. Typically, I'll go for a black pencil on my waterline because, you know, it just helps to make my eyes pop. But as of late, I've been going more towards a dark brown color on my waterline. I feel it just look, looks so good, um, especially when I do like a chocolatey type of look. So the pencil that I've been using, this is from NARS. This is their high pigment longwear eyeliner, and this is in the shade uh, Mambo. This is definitely for the girl who wants, you know, some color on her lower lash line, but doesn't want it to be too extreme with the black. Like you want it to be rich, but not too intense. Like you get what I'm saying? I hope what I'm saying makes sense. So I'll be going in with two mascaras. I like to use two, um, one for the top, one for the bottom. So for the top, I'll be using this mascara. This is from NARS. It says Climax. 
For my bottom lashes, I like to go in with this mascara. This is from MAC. You guys have seen me use this all the time. This is their Extended Play Jigga Black Lash Mascara. That was a mouthful. So before I apply my lashes, I like to go in with my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray and this helps to lock and seal the product in. Like once I spray this, it ain't going nowhere. So I like to do a test spray because this has a tendency of spinning and I want it to be a mist. So I like to do one spray to make sure that it's all good to go. So I am done with my eyes. Basically this entire makeup look is finished. All I gotta do is apply my lips. Now for my lashes, I know this may not be everyone's cup of tea and that's fine because we don't all have gotta be liking the same thing, but I like my extra voluminous type of lashes. People, you know, got they type of negative comments to say about these lashes, but I don't care because I'm gonna still wear them. But if you are interested, they are down below. And if you don't like them, <laughs> but for my lip pencil or my lip liner, um, I'll be going in with this Buxom Cosmetics. Um, this is their Powerline Plumping Liner, and this is in the shade Creamy Chocolate. As you can see on this end, we have the pencil, the liner, and then on this end, we have a brush. So I am able to feather out the harshness of the color on my lips. And this is what it looks like. Oh my gosh, you guys, this look is just amazing. So gorgeous. Um, I have a whole bunch of lippies here. I don't know if I wanna do lipstick with a gloss or if I just wanna do gloss. Um, There is a lip that I'd love to put on, but I cannot find it right now. Give me a second, let me go check my other makeup bag. I went on a hunt trying to find this lip combo that i have in mind and i finally found it the lip gloss i want to use today this is the charlotte tilbury i believe this is called pillow talk is it called pillow talk yes it is small little gloss i haven't touched this in a very very long time get close for you guys this is how it looks um this is an anastasia beverly hills lip gloss i do not even know the name like it came off um i think it's called chai i think it's called chai i do want my lips to be a bit more shiny so i'll be using this lime crime wet cherry gloss um it's a clear gloss so i'm just gonna go in with some and you know this is a clear gloss with a brush like you gotta you know put the applicator inside Girl, this is no longer gonna be clear. It's gonna be some type of nude concoction I'm about to create. Look at that. I hope I remember this lip combo. This is the combo with my pencil. Look at this. Look at face. <laughs> All right, you guys, so this is the final look. I absolutely love how my makeup turned out. Like, you guys, I kid you not, every single time I finish doing my makeup, I just have to sit back, literally, and just look at the work that I did, that I created. Like, this is such a flawless beat. And this is something that I would consider more like an everyday type of makeup look. Now, I understand that a lot of product was used and put into creating this look, but I've mentioned this before, to create that nice type of makeup look that you see Lori Harvey wearing, trust me, okay? That natural, you know, beat glam, it takes a lot of product to get this look, okay? Like if you want the highlight, you want the contour, you want the blush, you want the flawless base, you want that nice complexion, it takes time. And when even when it comes down to the eyes and the brows and everything, like it takes time. Y'all can't see my bun in the frame. Like it was either, do I sacrifice up here to show bun or do I just sacrifice some of the bun? Cause y'all see how the bun be bunning. The bun is bunning. <laughs> 
the bun a bun, you understand? Why did I just say that? All makeup products will be listed in the description box below, so do check that out. I'll also list all the brushes that I used as well, but I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It felt really good to sit down and do my makeup with y'all. Like, hmm, ciao, honey, get into it, get into it. It looks so good, and I actually love this lippy as well. I gotta remember it because I'm gonna be using this in the future. I mixed glosses. I haven't done like a mixture of glosses in a very long time. But anywho, again, everything will be down in the description box below. Drop your comments below as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell to be notified whenever I upload a video so you never miss a video. Follow me on Instagram at Tamara Renee, my one and only Instagram. Follow me on TikTok, my one and only TikTok at Tamara.Renee. Keep up with me on my blog at www.tamararenee.com. I did update my blog as of recent um what else do you want to keep up with me on like other platforms be sure to go to www.tamarene.com backslash links and i will have all my other platforms linked on there for you guys to keep up with me and all that good stuff again i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching i love you guys and i'll catch y'all in the next video bye going on but my lash this right lash I'm trying to be playing me today and I really ain't in the mood for all of that mm -mm.